Now the world is known to lie because it's, the world is placed in the bosom of Satan, the father of all lies, as the Lord Jesus stated and said. Now that's, that's nothing unusual. The world always lives in lies. But when the church comes and embraces these lies, now it's a problem. The church should be the light of the world. The church should be the place where truth is spoken. For centuries on end, yet no church leader ever came and said to another one, you're my brother and united. They have been in division for centuries and centuries on end. But when it came to satanic evil agendas, all church leaders united. To this, I'll say, shame on such unity. That's a very cowardly act. I don't give one penny about secret societies. I don't give one penny about evil agendas. I don't give one penny about the wealth, the money, the treasures of the entire world. I'll step on it because all I care about, I want my Lord at the end to extend his arm and point his finger at me and say, blessed are you, O good servant. Come inherit the kingdom of your heavenly father, which was made and prepared before the creation of the world. I want the Lord, I want the Lord to be happy. I want the Lord to call me to him. What am I going to do with all this nonsense? It's nonsense. Now the world is known to lie because it's the world is placed in the bosom of Satan, the father of all lies, as the Lord Jesus stated and said. Now that's, that's nothing unusual. The world always lives in lies. But when the church comes and embraces these lies, now it's a problem. The church should be the light of the world. The church should be the place where truth is spoken. My sister and I have a very different views on Christianity. She doesn't believe morality comes from God. She doesn't believe in heaven or hell. She doesn't think donations to the church is a wise. <laughs> you <can> donate to me. <laughs> um, we often have very heated debates that get more and more heated as the night goes on. I don't know what to say or show her that Christ is real. Christianity is the only way and being an atheist is a deflection from what is true. Please tell me how to handle people like her. Thank you and God bless you. God bless you as well, my beloved, my beloved, my beloved son. Um, or maybe daughter. Um, your sister has different uh, point, uh, you know, views when it comes to Christianity. Being an atheist, um, I'll say this, an atheist says God doesn't exist. Well, the only way you deny the existence of someone when they are truly in existence. Because you can never deny the existence of someone that never existed. Are you with me? Like, what's the, what's, what's the logic behind this? Oh, I, I don't believe in God because God doesn't exist. Well, if he doesn't exist, then why are you saying he doesn't exist? Because that only applies to someone that exists, but you choose to say he doesn't. So an atheist literally saying God does exist, but I just don't believe in him. Well, that's your problem. Just like that teacher that tried to brainwash these little kids in a classroom. She took these seven, eight year old kids out into the field. She said to the kids, do you see the tree? Yes, miss. Said, well, you see, there is no God. But you see the tree. Do you see the flower? Yes, miss. Well, where is God? There isn't, but there is a flower. 
Do you see the bird? Yes, where there is no God, there is the bird. One of the students, the Lord will always have an eyewitness for himself. One of the students said, Miss, can I ask the students a question? She thought he was going to back her up. She said, yes, of course. He said, boys and girls, do you see the Mrs. Brain? <laughs> they said, no. He said, she doesn't have one. So beautiful from an eight, seven year old kid. So just because you deny the existence of God, that doesn't mean God doesn't exist. It's your head. I was going to say brainless. <laughs> it's your head that says God doesn't exist. There are so many factors, so many evidences of God's existence. You go to an atheist scientist. You say to him, does energy exist? He'll say yes. Can you ever see energy? He will say no. Hello? So energy exists, but you can't see it. Can you ever see it? No. How do you know it exists then? There are evidences to prove energy exists. Okay. Okay, Habibi. You say, do you see God? I say, no. But I've seen him in Jesus Christ. You can't say, I've seen him. You haven't, that's your tough luck. Ask, it'll be granted. Um, if I say to you, now, now this is my answer to you, my dear friend. How do I speak to my sister and the people like her? Speak with logic. Because since they don't believe in God, they're not going to believe in the Holy Bible. So if you're going to keep on quoting them from the Holy Bible, you are just going in circles. Because they say, well, we don't believe in your God, so don't stop quoting us from the Bible. I don't believe in your Bible. So you need to speak with them in a logical way. Okay, logically speaking, to my beloved atheist person, if I say to you that the Oxford Dictionary came together in this perfection, in this complexity, because something exploded in the printing press, would you accept it? He's going to laugh or she's going to laugh at me. What do you mean? Yes, the Oxford Dictionary came in this perfection and complexity because something exploded while the printer was printing. Bang. Oh, that reminds me of something. The Big Bang. So the printer went bang and the Oxford Dictionary showed up. Will they accept? It's a laughable matter. They're going to say, are you normal? Something wrong with your head? No. Why? Explosion created the book. The moment you look at the Oxford Dictionary, immediately, instantaneously, you say there is a big brain behind this book. There was a brain that put this complex book together. Then, my dear atheist friend, how much more this complex universe, how come you can believe this nonsense of a theory that the Big Bang made this complex universe? If the Oxford Dictionary could have come into existence without a brain, how much more this universe couldn't have come into existence without this mighty, immense, infinite brain called God. I rest my case. That's just the tip of the iceberg. You look at this baby. Did you know we all came from a dead cell? <laughs> Scientists are being smart and they say we can create a cell. Yes, you can create one, but not a living one. You'll have to take a living cell from a human in order to make this cell living. Where did this cell receive life from oh in the book of genesis and god breathed the breath 
of life into the nostrils of Adam and Adam became a living soul. Oh, so where did this life come from? God. Let me say to these scientists who are trying to be whatever. You can go to the moon, to Mars, to whoop whoop land. You can create rockets that can fly whatever speed they can fly with. Let me tell you one thing. You can never create life and you can never stop life. What God has done, no one can stop, no one can change. God is the one who gives this life. God is the one who takes it. No one can change or do anything about it. No one. God. God. I always bring the, um, the fact, a scientific fact about your DNA. Did you know there is about 8 billion people live on the globe as we speak? Approximately 8 billion. Bill Gates is trying to make it around 1 billion. Bill Gates, let me tell you this. If you don't repent and ask Jesus Christ specifically, and I'll say to this to, to America, next time you say, God bless America, don't stop at the word God only. Because God to someone is a cow. God to someone is a wind. God to someone is fire. Which God? Next time as a president, when you stand and you say God, you say Jesus Christ of Nazareth, bless America. Now you're talking. And if anybody gets offended, with all love and respect, I don't give one penny. Because this is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And if I don't speak the truth to you, then I don't love you. I'm not your friend. I'm not judging. This is the truth. Believe me, when you go to the next life, <laughs> there is no Muhammad, no Krishna, no... I oh, know this man. What is this? You're going to see one, the breath of your life, the beauty of existence, the source to everything and everyone. His name is Jesus. This has got nothing to do with you being a Christian or not. Please, I'm not judging. This has got to do with the truth, the truth, the truth. You're an atheist, you're a Muslim, you're a Buddhist, you're a Hindus, you're a Christian, you're whatever. The truth. It's Jesus. You're going to see him only. He's the only way to heaven. He's the gateway to heaven. He's the life. He's the truth. It's Jesus Christ. There is about 8 billion. Oh yeah, Bill Gates, sorry. If you don't repent with all love, I'm saying this, my dear friend, you'll end up where Jeffrey Epstein is. Do you know who Jeffrey Epstein is? Do you want me to remind you? Do you know Jeffrey Epstein now is begging for mercy? Do you know? Do you know where Jeffrey Epstein is and what he's going through now? Do you think this is a joke? Do you think? Do you th no, no. Do you think this is a joke? When the spirit leaves the body, my dear friend, my dear friend, Jesus Christ, you don't joke with. He's the most awesome God and very fearful one too. He's sharper than a sword. Do you think, do you understand if he wants to punish someone, what he can do? I'll tell you one thing. Jeffrey Epstein is definitely not in a good place. This is all I can say. He is begging the Lord Jesus for another chance. Do you want to go there? All of those who are doing evil and are choosing to do evil and do not wish to repent, you will end up in a place you will beg God for one second to give you to ask for his forgiveness. 
and for his mercy. I'm saying it as a servant of this God. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes? This is the truth, my dear friend. Forget about this world. Ah, oh, you want to kill me? That's okay. Please do. Because I can't wait to go to the Lord. You can't. It's until my Jesus says so. Until my Jesus. Yes? So you cannot bring the world population to one billion. Because you'll be six feet underground before this happens. Do you understand? It's only when Jesus Christ says so. You little kid. So wake up, grow up, and ask for forgiveness. The DNA of every human being, no one has your fingerprint. Are you telling me the Big Bang did this? Get a life. There is a massive, mighty brain intelligence behind this intelligent creation. So 8 billion people, no one has your fingerprint. What is that? What is that? A fluke? No, it's planned by God. Because he says to you, you individually, you are my child. You're unique. You're you. And no one else is you. So don't ever try to be someone else that is not you. Because when I created you, I meant for you to be you. Yes? So, 8 billion. There is 3.1 billion bits of information in everyone's DNA. It's made out of 3.1 billion bits of information. If I were to change it into words, on an A4 paper with 500 words, on that A4 paper, 500 words. It will take me 600,000 pages to write your DNA alone. You put all the encyclopedias of the world together, they'll get nowhere near the complexity and the information which God has placed in your DNA. You're telling me a Big Bang about 13 years, billion years ago exploded? Oxford Dictionary came out of an explosion? You fool. For the universe to come out of an explosion. Maybe you are that explosion. Or your head just exploded inside of you and left you with nothing. 3.1 billion pieces of information. 600,000 pages, A4, 500 words per page. To write your DNA, 600,000 pages. All the encyclopedias put together of the world. No way near your encyclopedia. And you're telling me there's no God? Man, this God is beautiful. His name is Jesus Christ. Believe you me, unless you come to Jesus Christ, none of the religions will save you. The only one that's going to save you is Jesus. Whether you're a Christian or not, you need Jesus to come into heaven. Trust me. Been there, done that. And I will put my life on this.